Hi, this is Pauline Ng, creator of SIFT, and you can go to the website sift-dna.org to get the latest updates. This video is about understanding SIFT scores. So if you've run SIFT before, you've seen the output um, of SIFT, and maybe you're curious about the scores that are printed out. Um, this is output, uh, the top half is the output from SIFT genome, where you get the prediction whether a amino acid substitution is tolerated or damaging, and that's what you see in the far right hand side of the table. And then to the right of the prediction of um, whether it's tolerated or damaging, you also see a score, a median info, and number of sequences at position. Now, if you run uh, the SIF sequence, you also see predictions of tolerated and effect protein function, but you see additional information, um, the SIF score, as well as the median sequence conservation and sequences represented at this position. So what this video uh, is about, so um, these are the scores that we're going to be discussing. Um, what this video is about is really explaining these things in more detail. So um, in the next couple of minutes, I'll be explaining the SIFT score, the median sequence conservation, and the number of sequences represented at the position and how people use these. So the first thing is that SIFT scores. So SIFT scores range from zero to one where if um, the SIF score is between 0 and 0 0.05, it, uh, the amino acid substitution is predicted to be damaging. That is, it affects protein function. If the score is above 0 0.05, then SIFT automatically predicts the amino acid substitution to be tolerated. So um, it, the score ranges from 0 to 1, and it is a scaled probability that the amino acid would appear at that position in the alignment. It is not an absolute true probability. Okay, so um, as I said before, SIFT will automatically predict substitutions with scores less than 0.05 as predicting, um, uh, as affecting protein function. Um, but really the scores are based on probabilities, even though they're not true probabilities, and so the threshold is not as strict. And if you want, you can move it up. Um, so some users do look at substitutions that are less than 0.1 that, that are less than 0.1 and consider them damaging. And um, I've I've seen this, and some users have seen this too, that the scores correlate with severity. And we've tested this in the KG, um, in the KG contest. So for example, if you want to consider one being completely tolerated, if you want to increase sensitivity, you might want to consider substitutions with scores between 0.05 and 0.1 to increase sensitivity. OK, so now I'm going to go on to median sequence conservation. Um, you, when, you, when you run SIFT, you submit a protein sequence, or the, the basis of SIFT, pro, SIFT is to look at a protein sequence. And what SIFT does is it looks at the homologs that align to the protein sequence. So in this case, uh, my prot is the protein you're interested in. And then um, say in your search, you pick up identical sequences. So in this example, you see sequences that are 100% identical to each other. Now in this case, SIFT uses conservation to predict whether or not whether a amino acid substitution affects protein function or not. But the problem here is that every single amino acid appears to be conserved, and this could be you know this could be biological, for example, histones, which are strongly conserved throughout. Um, throughout evolution, or it could be an artifact of the database. Um, for example, some databases have a lot of viral proteins, you know, that are very, very similar to each other. And if you pick up the top 200 sequences that are closest to your protein, they're pretty much 99% identical. So to SIFT, it appears like the sequences are identical, and it's going to predict every position, you know, any substitution at every posi position as deleterious. And that's why we have this measure of diversity. So, you know, if you have an alignment of all identical sequences, then SIFT will predict all substitutions to be damaging. For example, at this position, serine is observed at all positions, at, at all s the sequences, and therefore will be predicted to be damaging. So that's not ideal if the sequences are um, very closely related to each other. What SIFT really wants is diverse sequences. So again, this is your protein sequences that you're interested in. Um, that's the first sequence that's labeled MyProt. And in this case, you've picked up diverse sequences, where, for example, um, at this position, you have, um, you have acidic residues. You see glut glutamate and aspartic acid. So that would hint that this uh, position could tolerate acidic residues. 
And for example, at this position, you have a gap. So um, maybe you could suffer a, a deletion of an amino acid here. And at this position, you observe hydrophobic amino acids, leucine, valine, and isoleucine, which suggests that hydrophobic amino acids would be tolerated at this position. So if you compare the left-hand side of identical sequences with the right-hand side of diverse sequences, you can see that you gain a lot more information when you have diverse sequences, and um, really that's what SIFT wants to use for its prediction. Okay, so now how do we measure then the diversity of sequences? We uh, calculate um, the median so sequence conservation, and this ranges from 0 to 4.32. The 4.32 is um, log base 2 of 20, where 20 is the 20 amino acids, if you're wondering where the 4.32 comes from. And this is a measure of conservation. So um, when your, when what you do is you m measure um, at each position, you calculate the conservation, and then across all positions, you, you calculate the median. Um, so the SIF parameters is that we're looking for a con uh, for a conservation score between 2.75 and 3.25. And if it's more than 3.25, then you're going to get a warning that it's low confidence. And what that means is that the sequences aren't diverse enough and that we could be predicting deleterious amino acids just based on the alignment because we just don't have diverse, um, diverse sequences. Basically, things are looking identical to each other, and that could be a database issue rather than true evolution. Um, so that's why you'll get a warning of low confidence. In user experience, um, and I've done this too, I've actually gone up to 3.5, and I think 3.5 is enough confidence. So um, the median sequence conservation is a measure where um, if it's 4.32, then all sequences in the alignment are identical to each other, and obviously it's not good for prediction because every single position appears conserved, and so any substitution will be predicted um, damaging. Um, so there's no confidence, and so that's why you want to lower it and have a median sequence conservation between 2.75 and 3.25, ideally. Um, and if there's not enough homologous sequences, hopefully you can reach 3.5. So the median sequence conservation is a reflection of the confidence in a prediction. Okay, and then finally, the last... Um, output that's printed out is number of sequences at the position. And that's pretty straightforward. So this is a, an example of an alignment. And you can see the first position has two Ms represented, but then um, but the other sequences don't have a amino acid at that position. And then um, if you look um, at the at where the three is listed, you can see that three of the sequences have an amino acid, a V, an L, and an L, whereas the first sequence has a gap. And so, um, and so basically, it just says the number of sequences at the position. OK, so I described this position where there's only two amino acids, this position where there's only three amino acids and a gap, and then this position where there's four amino acids um, at at this position. We actually don't use this very much for SIF prediction. Um, we do use it when there's very few sequences, like two or three, but in general this is kind of more information for the user and the SIFT algorithm does not use this. We rely on the diversity of the sequences, um, which was described in the previous slide. Okay, so that's it. That's explaining the SIF scores a little bit better if you were curious. Um, you can go to sif-dna.org for the latest updates. I'd like to thank everyone who has helped me with SIFT. It's, um, it's been at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, J. Craig Venture Institute, and I'm now at the Genome Institute of Singapore. Thank you.